Now, why do we physicians hardly ever hear a patient tell about his NDE? Patients are so reluctant to share their experience with others by all the negative responses they get. You have to be open to hear about an NDE. Patients must feel that you trust them, that you can listen without any command of predators. But for most physicians, the NDE is still an incomprehensible and unknown phenomenon. Once a conference was held about NDE in a university hospital with more than 300 people in attendance. And at the end of the conference, after several lectures about NDE, a man stood up and said, I am a cardiologist for more than 25 <coughs> years and I have never heard such absurd stories. This is total nonsense. I don't believe one word of it. And then another man got up in the audience and said, I am one of your patients. I have had an NDE during cardiac arrest and you would be the last one I would ever tell. <laughs> <laughs> they know exactly that they cannot share their experience with such kind of physicians. They are not open. Until recently, there was no prospective and scientifically designed study to explain the cause and content of an NDE. All studies have been retrospective and very selective in respect to patients. <coughs> Based on this, retros in this incomplete retrospective studies, some believed that the experience should be caused by physiological changes in the brain as a result of lack of oxygen, cerebral anoxia. Other theories encompass a psychological reaction to approaching death, hallucinations, dreams, side effects of drugs, or just false memories. So in 1988 we started the prospective studies of 344 consecutive survivors of cardiac arrest in 10 Dutch hospitals with the aim to investigate the frequency, the cause and the content of an NDE. This cartoon was published in a Dutch national newspaper when our study was published in The Lancet in December 2001. We wanted to know if there could be a physiological pharmacological, psychological or demographic explanation why people experience enhanced <coughs> consciousness during a period of cardiac arrest. We did a short standardized interview with sufficiently recovered patients within a few days of resuscitation and asked whether they could remember the period of unconsciousness and what they recalled. We additionally performed a longitudinal study with taped interviews in all of all late survivors of and the two and eight years following the cardiac arrest, along with a matched control group of survivors of cardiac arrest who did not report an NDE. <coughs> we studied patients who survived the cardiac arrest because this is a well-described, life-threatening medical situation, which is also called clinical death. The definition of clinical death was used for the period of unconsciousness caused by lack of oxygen or anoxia of the brain due to arrest of circulation and breathing that happens during cardiac arrest in patients with an acute myocardial infarction. These patients will ultimately die from irreversible damage of, to the brain if cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, is not initiated within 5 to 10 minutes. It is the closest model of the process of dying. In the cases where memories were reported, we coded the experiences according to a weighted core experience index. In this system, the depth of the NDE was measured according to the reported elements of the content of the NDE. The more elements were reported, the deeper the experience was and the higher the resulting score was. We found that 282 patients, 82%, had no recollection of the period of cardiac arrest, of their period of unconsciousness. But 62 patients, 18%, reported some recollection of the time of clinical death. And of these patients, 41, 12% had a core experience with a score of 6 or higher, and 21, 6% had a superficial NDE. Now, which elements were reported? 
And our study, about 50% of the patients with an NDE reported awareness of being dead or had positive emotions. About 25% of the patients had an out-of-body experience. 30% reported moving through a tunnel. About 25% had communication with the light of observed colors. About 30% of the patients had an observation of a celestial landscape or had a meeting with deceased relatives. 13% experienced a life review and 8% experienced a bore. So in our study all well-known elements were reported except the frightening NDE. But I know patients who had a frightening NDE. Now, what might distinguish a small percentage of patients who report an NDE from those who do not? We found to our surprise that neither the duration of cardiac arrest, two minutes or eight minutes, nor the duration of unconsciousness, five minutes or three weeks in coma, nor the need for intubation in complicated CPR, nor induced cardiac arrest in electrophysiological stimulation, had any influence on the frequency of NDE. NS is not significant. Neither could we find any relationship between the frequency of NDE and administered drugs, fear of death before the arrest, nor foreknowledge of NDE, that you know that this, these experiences exist, gender, religion, or education. So atheists or Christians, it didn't matter at all. We additionally performed a longitudinal study with taped interviews of all light, the late survivors, of NDE two and eight years following the cardiac arrest along with a matched control group of survivors of cardiac arrest who did not report an NDE. The study was designed to assess whether the loss of the fear of death, the transformation in attitude toward life, an enhanced intuitive sensibility is the result of having an NDE or just the result of the cardiac arrest itself. Only patients with an NDE did show this transformation. However, the integration and acceptance of an NDE is a process that may take many, many years because of the far-reaching impact on people's pre-NDE understanding of life and <coughs> value system. Finally, it is quite remarkable and a surprising and unexpected finding to see a cardiac arrest lasting just a few minutes give rise to such a lifelong process of transformation. The near-death experience turns out to be a life-changing experience. The newfound insight pertains that what matters in everything, everyday life, compassion and unconditional love for oneself, including acceptance of one's own dark side, this is already quite difficult, for others and for nature. It also pertains to insight into connectedness. Everything and everybody <coughs> is connected. This is why some people describe the NDE as an experience of unity. They speak of a cosmic law in which everything they do to another person will ultimately have an effect on them too. And this applies to both love and affection and violence and aggression. The conversations we had in our longitudinal study also revealed that people often to their own amazement and confusion, had acquired enhanced intuitive feelings after an NDE, or as many of them put it, they had acquired paranormal gifts. This enhanced intuition is based on direct connectedness with aspects of consciousness of others, and is independent of time, in a knowing of future events or having prognostic dreams, and independent of distance, a sense of knowing about an in incoming phone call and of pain, illness, of upcoming death of people which usually proves to be accurate. The sudden occurrence of this enhanced intuition can be quite problematic as people suddenly have a very acute sense of others which can be extremely intimidating. So despite the mostly positive experience the NDE is also a traumatic event because there is hardly any acceptance by doctors, nurses, family and partner 
more than 50% get a divorce, which makes the process of acceptance and integration very difficult. And this process will take many, many years with strong feelings of depression, homesickness and loneliness. As I have said, several theories have been proposed to explain an NDE. However, in our prospective study, it could not be shown that psychological, pharmacological or physiological factors cause this experience during cardiac arrest. With a purely physiological explanation such as lack of oxygen in the brain, most patients who have been clinical dead should report an NDE because all patients in our study have been unconscious <coughs> because of lack of oxygen in the brain resulting from the cardiac arrest. However, only 18% reported an NDE. And why only 18% reported an NDE after cardiac arrest is still a big mystery. Besides, it is a well-established fact that people without any lack of oxygen in the brain, like in depression or meditation, can also experience an enhanced consciousness. Another theory holds that NDE might be a changing state of consciousness, or the theory of continuity, in which memories, identity and cognition with emotion function independently from the unconscious body and retain the possibility of extrasensory perception. Obviously, during NDE, enhanced consciousness is experienced <coughs> independently from the normal body-linked waking consciousness. In four prospective studies with identical study design, our Dutch study, one study from the USA and two studies from the UK, about the same percentage of NDE was found in a total of 562 patients. Bruce Grayson from the American study writes in his comment that no one physiological or psychological model by itself could explain all the common features of an NDE. The paradoxical occurrence of heightened, lucid awareness and logical thought processes during a period of impaired cerebral perfusion raises particular perplexing questions for our current understanding of consciousness and its relation to brain function. A clear sensorium <coughs> and complex perceptual processes during a period of apparent clinical death challenge the concept that consciousness is localized exclusively in the brain. As Sempani and Peter Fennick from Southampton write that the data from several NDE studies suggest that the NDE arises during unconsciousness and this is a surprising conclusion because when the brain is so dysfunctional that the patient is deeply comatose, those cerebral structures which underpin subjective experience and memory <coughs> must be severely impaired. Complex experiences such as are reported in the NDE should not arise or be retained in memory. Such patients would be expected to have no subjective experience at all. A Penny Sartori also from England concludes that according to the mainstream science it is quite impossible to find a scientific explanation for the NDE as long as we believe that consciousness is only a side effect of a functioning brain. The fact that people report lucid experiences in their consciousness when brain activity has ceased is in her view difficult to reconcile with current medical opinion. With lack of evidence for any other theories for NDE, the concept thus far assumed but never scientifically proven that consciousness and memories are produced by large groups of neurons and are localized in the brain should be discussed. How could clear consciousness outside one's body be experienced at the moment that the brain no longer functions during a period of clinical death? even with a flatline EEG. Such a brain would be roughly analogous to a computer 
with his power source unplugged and his circuits detached. It couldn't hallucinate. It couldn't do anything at all. 